Hey everyone, John from RC Departure. This video is going to be the unboxing and build of the new Extra 330SC BP3D profile airplane from eFlight. I'm pretty excited to put this one together. I think it's going to be a fun plane if you've seen the video. It looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box and get the build started. All right guys, here are all the parts laid out on the table. I really like this color scheme. It's really nice and bright, and the covering is uh, really good. I don't see any major wrinkles or anything. I'm gonna have to re-shrink. It all looks great, ready to go. It is a profile plane, but the wing is airfoiled. It's a nice thick 3D type airfoil, so that's a nice little feature there. You get the hardware for the servo linkages. You get a motor mount. Of course you get the wheels, the landing gear, wheel pants, and a few decals, which include that really cool profile pilot figure there. I think that's a nice little touch uh, by eFlight to include that so you can actually have a pilot in this airplane. So let's go ahead and look at the electronics that I'm going to use for this aircraft. Alright guys, I've got the protective mat on the table to protect the airplane from the table and the table from the building process. I like to use these little styrofoam trays to keep all the electronics and all the small bits and pieces in just so they don't kind of fall and get lost and stuff like that. So that's basically the way we'll do it. Before I actually build the airplane, I'm going to set up all the electronics, get everything uh, ready, the servos centered, you know, bind the uh, receiver, and that way I'll just kind of build things as we go along and I can make sure there's no servo issues or any problems before we actually install them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll get started with building the airplane. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put in the rudder servo. All of the servos mount the same way, so we'll just show this one time. Basically, you just take the mounting screws that come with the servo, and we'll put them in the little servo mount holes. All right, so that's all set. Just make sure you take your time working those servos into the slots as they're a tight fit and you are working with balsa wood so you don't want to rush things too much and force it. Also be careful screwing those screws in just because if you slip with the screwdriver, you're going to punch a hole in your covering and they don't have to fix that. So take your time, uh, go slowly, and just uh, that's the way you do it. So we'll go on to the next part of the build. All right, guys, we're ready to install the wing. That's the next step. We're moving along pretty quickly. The wing, basically, you just test fit into the fuselage. It slid in nice and easily. You want to make sure that it's going to be equidistant from the tip to the tail on each side so that your wing isn't crooked, and then 90 degrees to the vertical stabilizer. There's not much room for it to flex this way or that, so I'm not too worried about the 90 degrees. As far as this goes, first you eyeball it. And then what I've been doing for a, long, for a long time is using this kind of homemade improvised little tool, which is just a carbon fiber rod with a servo horn stuck in it, which I can slide up and down and it's pretty secure. So what I do is I put the tip of the carbon fiber rod at the tail, and then I adjust this to mark where the tip or edge of the wing is. So I'm just kind of superimposing it so you get the idea. So once I get that, I'll check the other side the other way and see that it's equidistant. And if I'm not, then I know I'm crooked. So I'll just adjust the wing until I get them equidistant. Then I know that I am square and true, and I can go ahead and glue the wing. So first, this is gonna be a test fit, and then we're going to, once we have it lined up how we want, we'll just mark the wing with some marker. You'll wanna just gently remove the covering where it's gonna contact the balsa of the fuselage. And that way you get a nice balsa to balsa glue joint so it's not just stick the wing in and glue it. We do have that step to do. Uh, and then once we do that, we've got the wing installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that using my little measuring device, and then we'll uh, go on from there. All right, guys, I got it lined up and placed my marks. Now I will just remove the covering from that center portion, top and bottom, and then reinstall the wing, make sure it's lined up center, and glue it in. All right, just be real gentle when you cut off that covering. You don't want to score or cut the balsa up. You want to just do it light enough to take off the covering, which is pretty light. And then once you get a strip off like that, you're good to go to get the wing in there and glued on in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, guys, the wing is now glued into place, and we're going to do the same thing for the horizontal stabilizer. Test fit it first, line it up, and then we'll use the 
little marker to mark the outside edges on the top and the bottom so we know where to remove the covering to glue it in. I'm going to use my same little measuring device here to make sure that the tips of the horizontal stabilizer are equidistant to the tips of the wing on each side so that, we're, so that we know we're lining it up square and true that way. As far as it being level with the wings, you know you can just eyeball that. And pretty simple, just eyeball it. And I think this one actually is going to look like it's pretty much spot on without needing any uh, work done to it. If it's not level, you can sand a little bit on the fuselage where it joins so you can kind of either bend it up or down a little bit so you get it lined up perfectly. Now one thing I want to mention before you glue that horizontal stabilizer in is get this piece out because this is the elevator joiner and if this is not in place in there when you glue the horizontal stabilizer in you're going to have a bit of a problem. This is hard to put in once this is glued in so this is going to need to be in place. To prep this you just need to get some sandpaper and sand the portions that are going to go into the elevator so that when they glue they'll have a nice contact surface and you'll get a nice glue bond. So just take some sandpaper and scuff up these parts and then before you glue that horizontal stabilizer and make sure that this is in place in the back. I'll just show you how that looks real quick so you get what I'm talking about and we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and line up the horizontal stabilizer and then remove the covering and get it glued in place. And there's the covering removed before I place the horizontal stabilizer into the fuselage slot. I did actually have to sand a little bit of the slot on one side as it was not quite level with the wings once I looked at it more closely. So I just sanded gently one side to create kind of a little bit of a slope and that way we'll get the stabilizer lined up nicely with the wings. All right guys, remember that elevator joiner? Make sure that you put it in place before you finish gluing the horizontal stabilizer in. Otherwise, you will not be able to get this back in there. And be careful with the glue so you don't glue it to anything. So everything is lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the stabilizer in once I final check it, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, everything is glued in. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's as straight as I could probably get it. I did sand a little bit off of this side to bring it down, it was kind of tilted that way a little bit. And when I glued it, I put just a little downward pressure on that side just to help it line up. Nothing has to be really perfect here, really. I mean, it will fly fine if it's even a little bit crooked. But, you know, if you're like me, I try to get things as nice and straight as I possibly can. And, you know, that looks plenty good for the airplane. So I'm happy with that. And we'll go on with the build. Don't forget that elevator joiner. Got to have that in place. All right, guys, we're ready to actually join the elevator up to the horizontal stabilizer. And this step calls for using CA hinges, little tiny CA hinges. They come on a sheet and you just cut them out pretty easy. So the ailerons and the rudder also use the CA hinges. So I'm just going to go over this one time. And then those uh, use the same method. The slots are already pre-cut into all of the surfaces. So you just need to place the hinges in and also for this step, we'll be using some five minute epoxy and that's just to glue the elevator uh, joiner you know, into the elevator halves. So we'll go ahead. Um, they call for using T-pins to install the CA hinges. You know, I, I don't do that. I basically just, there's three on each elevator side here. I'll get them worked into their slot, you know, about halfway on each side and then Sorry, that's a little off there, but I'll work them in halfway and then I'll just tack glue that with just a little drop of CA. Not to glue it all the way in, but just to tack glue it so when I put it in, it's not going to push into the uh, inside here. So I just tack glue that, one here, one here, one here, and then we'll have those lined up. We'll get the epoxy onto the, just a light coating of epoxy onto the elevator joiner. Slide everything in, make sure it's all lined up perfectly. And then we'll go, glue a, go ahead and glue the CA hinges into place. So that's basically the step. Before you glue anything, you can just, once it's tack glued, just make sure everything is lined up nicely. And once you like that, back everything out, put the epoxy on the elevator joiner, and then slide everything back in. It's five minute epoxy, so you got a little bit of time to work things around. And then once you like it, drip more CA into the hinges to um, complete the glue joint, and then you're uh, all set. So we'll go ahead and get that done. 
All right, so a quick test fit. Actually, everything lines up pretty much perfectly. I didn't have to widen any of the slots or anything, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, get it all glued in. All right, guys, so after you do the elevator, you do the rudder and the ailerons with the same CA hinges. Everything went just fine, and we're on to the landing gear. All right, guys, here's everything for the landing gear assembly. There are bits of plastic lying around because to get the wheel spacers as you can see they're going through the wheel hub to get those wheel spacers in I had to get out the old body reamer and remount the plastic of the wheels a little bit it was just too tight so once I did that the wheel spacers went in okay basically you have the axles here for the wheels within the wheel pants a couple screws to mount the pants to the landing gear and then a couple more screws here to mount the whole assembly to the fuselage so it's pretty straightforward instructions are very clear so I'm going to go ahead and just get it all assembled and get it onto the fuselage. All right, so the main landing gear is installed. The tail wheel just slides into place with some five minute epoxy to glue it in. And we've got the main gear attached. So moving right along, on to the next step. All right, guys, I've installed the aileron servos. Same deal as the other servos. You want to drive the servo mount screws into the balsa, then put a little thin CA to harden the tract. Install the servos with the output shafts facing towards the rear of the aircraft, towards the ailerons. And you put in the right uh, servo first and thread the wire uh, through the wing and out the little opening on the opposite side. And then you put in the left uh, servo and uh, thread the wire through that little opening so that they both come out that little opening and then can be uh, directed towards the uh, receiver, just like that. Okay guys, that's the aileron servos. All right guys, to mount the receiver, it's pretty straightforward. Just get some of your favorite double-sided sticky tape, put it on the back. You drill a tiny little hole in the bottom of the wing right there for one of the antenna wires to go through. And then you go ahead and just mount it to the side of the fuselage there. And I'll just kind of keep it away from the fuselage until that wire is nicely seated in there. And then we'll just bring it over and Attach it. There you go. Now there's a the receiver ready to go. Simple as that. Okay guys, in this step you just cut the covering off the bottom of the fuselage here. There is a channel for the elevator and rudder servo leads to run through. So cut the covering off so they can run through that little tract and then just seal the edges of the covering there with a covering iron or even just a trim tool. That's all there is to that. Alright guys, I cut the channel, got the servo leads all hooked up. You do need two 12 inch leads to connect the elevator and rudder servos to the receiver. And then you just take your trim tool and just tack down this covering along the edges of where you cut just so it doesn't lift off. Simple as that. Okay guys, all those wires are in. Try to make them as tidy as you can in that groove. Elevator rudder and aileron servo leads are all into the receiver, so just the ESC to go. So we're gonna go on to the control horn installation. I'm just going to show that for probably the elevator just one time and then go ahead and do the rest of the airplane. All right guys, all the control horns are the same design. They all basically just slide into two holes that are already in place in whatever surface you're doing. And you just put them in like so. So we're working on the elevator right now. And just gentle force, not too hard. And that's right in there now. So we're going to flip the airplane over. Okay, so now all we got to do is we flipped it over and from the top side of the elevator just drip a few drops of thin CA right along those posts. Just like that. Next you take the back plate, put it over those two posts, get it down flush with the control surface, and a few more drops of CA and you're done. So I'm going to do that now and then do it for the rest of the control horns.